How y'all doing, ladies and gentlemen? So the one thing I love about Android is having a rooted phone. A rooted phone opens up the possibilities to anything you want. Not well, not anything you want, really. It's more like per personal preference. There's more customizability that uh, Android already allows on a rooted phone. And it's just multiply tenfold. You also get stuff like system ad blockers. And I love having a rooted phone. I think I haven't had a non-rooted phone since like 2015. 14 2013 like I've, every every phone i get is just a root automatically but there's also one downside to having a rooted phone is that some system apps won't work such as banking apps and more recently netflix so pretty sure you guys know if you open up netflix or you go to the play store and you open up you search up netflix and netflix will say uh looking for netflix this app won't work on your device and same thing will happen for hulu if you look up hulu hulu you look up Hulu and say this app won't work on your device either. And most banking apps, I know Wells Fargo doesn't work. I, my Wells Fargo doesn't work. Uh, but it, you, you Netflix, the, 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 I can't talk. Netflix used to have like a uh, a workaround, say for this to, for this. So if you would go on your browser and you'd look up a hey, Netflix on uh, uh, Netflix says incompatible with your device, Netflix will say yeah, yeah, your device is incompatible. Like usually for I'll explain why it says it for some reason, but one of their workarounds was install the app directly from Netflix. And if you click it, if you click it, you say, oh, it'll download the Netflix app. You download an APK file. And the APK file, if you open it, it will install a new version of Netflix. However, this doesn't work anymore because for some reason, OnePlus, uh, I don't remember why, something about HDR has made Netflix a system app. And as a system administrator app, it won't work. So it'll say this. If you're on a rooted phone, it'll say this device is not supported by the app. Now, the reason the app is not supported is because we have something called a Google Play certificate, something like that. I can tell you right now what it is exactly. It is a Play Protect certification. It says Play Protect is your device is not Play Protect certified. That means we don't have pass a safety net check and we don't we don't basically meet the requirement. We don't meet the Google requirements of having to be a safe device. So they see the safe device and they're like, no, this, this device can definitely screen record Netflix. So we don't want that. We don't want anybody to steal our shows, but yada, yada, or ban for banking apps as well. It's like, we don't want people to have like extreme weird access to their banking accounts. So we're just going to shut all that down. However, I, I found out like through hours of searching that, uh, Instead, like every time I looked up, it was like, oh, you got to pass the safety net test. And th there would be so many like different modules to run and hacks and all that. That would say like, yeah, that's how you get it. And it, it does work. Those devices, th those things do work, but they do not pass it for Netflix or for any other system apps. Like Google Play will not think you are Play certified, but you will pass a safety net, which are two different things now. So I figured out how and by I figured out, I mean... Google figured it out because Google actually has their own thing to uh, register your device. In case you have a custom ROM or custom kernel installed in your rooted device, you will be able to register it with Google and then they will accept it within 12 hours. But for now, for first things first, first, we're going to do two things. We're going to get a safety net check done and then we're going to get the Google cert play certified third third certification so what we're going to do first is you're going to need these apps obviously you're going to have you're going to need root well i mean to be honest if you're already here you already have root you already have a root device and that's why you're here otherwise you wouldn't be coming to me because the apk install would work on its own if you weren't rooted so verify we got busy box and we got root we got root access so now now we can get that out of the way we can just move this oh well I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm gonna give you a pause I'm going to let you, these are the apps we're going to need. We're going to need a root, a root checker app. We're going to need the Play Store. Obviously, we're going to need Netflix, your browser of choice. We're going to need um, a file browser of choice, of your choice. It, for those of you who've already rooted and have you have rooted in the past few years, there is a thing called Magisk Module Manager. I know it used to be something completely different or there wasn't this before. But if this is the app Magisk. You can download and install it. So the first thing we're gonna do, all right, we're gonna have Magisk installed, and we're gonna go to the modules. You're going to go install from. Okay, so I went on a tangent there. I know 
they I found the actual file because my file wasn't working again. But here's this file, the Universal Safety Net Fix. I'll post a link down in the description to get it from their official GitHub page. So uh, just in case you didn't see it again, yeah, I had that one, Safety Master Safety. That's the one I told you about right now. Safety Net Fix. It'll go to go to, to everything. It will have to reboot. Okay. Powered by Magix reboot. I'm assuming you guys already have like a backup made because you know if you're rooting, you probably want to have a backup unless you're like me and you're like waiting for an excuse to buy a new phone. Then you know, it's up, completely up to you. But like your phone's right here, it's rebooting. It's, I have connected. I'll pop the screen back up in a second. So just so you know, I mean, right here. So thought I guess I'll skip ahead. Okay, so we're back. We rebooted and now we're gonna see if we pass the safety net test. Passed, there we go, complete, congratulations, congratulations. A, you did it. You passed the safety net test by a safety net request, response signature, you are good to go for banking apps, I believe. I'm not gonna test it out because I'm not gonna sign into my bank account. I honestly don't keep that stuff on my phone, but it works. So, now that we passed the safety net test, will Netflix still work? Netflix still won't work, it'll say this app still not supported by the device, even though we've updated it through the app, I updated it through the APK. And even go on Play Store, it'll stay. We'll say, you know, Hulu. Nothing. It still won't work. And when we go over here to the certification, like I said, they are two different things now. The Play Cert, the Play Certification, Certification, and the, what do you call it? All that other stuff is not working. So it'll say, yeah, it's not working. However, there is one thing that can do. The one thing I have to, uh, I kind of want to pull out my browser for it on my, on my desktop just because it is, Kind of hard to do it on the phone, kind of, kind of not. Well, let's look it up right here first. Uh, we will look up a uh, play protect certification. Device is not certified. So it says fix issues is the actual Google thing, right? It says device isn't certified. And if your device isn't on the list of certified devices, you can register your device if you were using a custom ROM. Did, remember, I'll, I'll put this link right here. I'll put this link for this specific website on the thing, on, on the description of the video. I know I'm kind of talking a lot, kind of weird. Bear with me, I'm sorry. So you're gonna have to sign in as always. Okay, so here it is. It says overview, device manufacturers work with Google to certify yada, 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 a bunch of corporate stuff. If you're a user wanting to use a custom ROM or current on your device, please, you gotta submit your Google Services Framework ID. And it gives you a nifty little line of code right here as to how you do it. And you do that on a console with your computer using ADB. However, you do not actually need to do that because there is a nifty app called Device ID. Now what Device ID does is, I mean, it just it basically just scans everything, gives you all your IDs. You have your Android Service ID, your Google Services Framework, which is the one we need. The second one is the one we need this is what we need, the Google Services Framework ID. I'm gonna copy that, I'm going to go back out and we're going to go back to wherever we were. Blank. Did that not go anywhere? Did I not? Did I not do that? Oh wait, I was on Chrome, that's right. I'm, I'm dumb, I was on Chrome. So we're gonna to go to Google Services Framework ID and we're gonna paste the ID there. We're gonna select, I'm not a robot register device registered ID converted to decimal and that is it it will take 12 hours about 12 hours so when I first did this I did this at about a um uh, this is at about like two o'clock in the evening and oh look it gave me a different Android ID cool anyway uh for me it said what do you call it? I did it at like what two o'clock in the evening, and then I just went on my merry day. Nothing happened. I went to settings, and check said device is not certified. So I said, all right, well I'm gonna restart this. So I'm gonna restart this, and we'll see what it says. Even though this is more of a server side of their issue, now that like the ball is in their court, I did it to just because it was there, the option was there, I ran out of options, I spent hours upon hours upon hours installing different modules and doing a bunch of stupid shit and nothing would work. But then when I did this, I did it at two o'clock in the evening, I sped ahead, I speed ahead, it was like 2 a.m. I was driving back home, 2, 3 a.m. I was driving back home when I saw my phone, the SIM card wasn't working. Now the SIM card wasn't working for some reason, I was like super confused and I thought, oh, it's probably because of the weather 
you know, it's like nine degrees here in Texas. Uh, and I was like, we're not used to that. So, you know, it, it all makes sense that it would stop working maybe. But then I realized I don't have a uh, physical SIM. I have a uh, eSIM. And so I was like, huh, that's kind of weird then. So when I got home, I spent like 45 minutes without a SIM card. I just kept having the little logo up there and said no SIM card. So I thought, okay, that's kind of weird. And then eventually it started working. And when I checked, uh, I was able to update or I was able to see that Netflix was on the Play Store available for me. Netflix, Hulu, and my banking app was even working. So honestly, just registering your device with Google. However, I'm not going to be able to show you right now. This video is going to take me two days to record. And it is like the worst thing ever because I am like super bad at talking right now. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to skip ahead. We're going to skip ahead and we're going to get, I'm going to get back to you when this thing starts working again. Okay, so I'm back. It's currently 1.37 and I finished at like midnight last night was the video I was recording. But anyway, I realized I didn't use all the apps I have listed on here. So, I mean, they're good apps to have regardless, but I mean, these are the apps we ended up using. So what we last did, I'm assuming I'm remembering we registered the device. And it was about 3 a.m. last night when I checked. And if I go back here, it will say device is certified. Oh, I messed that up. Boom, device is certified. So there we go. We are in. Now, with that out of the way, all we have to do is one more thing. We passed the safety net test. I remember checking that. And so one more thing left to do was to hide Magisk app, the Magisk module. We had to hide it. So the way we hide it is we go to settings and we go down here to hide the Magisk app. We allow installation from these apps because it's basically installing itself as its own brand new app. So we go over here and we hit back. We click hide magic app, click OK, settings, got to try it a bit a few times or close the app after you click hide and then go there, go back to it, hide the magic app. You know, hide the magic app, it'll ask if you want to install an app called settings or whatever you wanted to call it, it'll ask for you to grant it permissions and install, install from the source because it is now known as the settings app. So you'll have two instances of settings, one your default settings and another one this one. Add shortcut to home screen. Yeah, sure. Add the home cut. One more thing we have to do to fully hide this. You go to settings. Then you go to the, I think enforced denied list is going to be off. You're going to want Zygisk on and enforced denied list. Enforced denied list on. You're going to go to configure the denied list. And right here, you are going to click on the right dots. Show system apps as well. Because what you want to find is Netflix. You're going to click on that drop down menu to enable everything. So this basically hides this settings app from these applications. You're going to hide it from that one. Then you're going to search up Google and you're going to find the Google play services, carriers, uh, anything that you need to hide the magic app from that is denying it. So let's just find Google play services right here. We'll do the drop down menu, enable all of them, Google play store. If you just click on the little check mark without dropping down the menu, it's only going to select the first one. So the thing I do is uh, I click on it, drop down the menu, and then hit select all. And that should be it. Google services framework as well, just because. So then done. Go back, go back. When you do that, go back to configure deny list. They should be right there. Then honestly, that's all you have to do. You have to restart it. I don't need to restart it. I already did. I'm not gonna lie to you. I already did this at 4 a.m. But once you have it there, this should happen. You should have Netflix running after you restart it. There is no risk of boot looping with the modules that I've suggested. There is no risk of boot looping as long as I'm concerned. As far as I'm concerned, there is no risk of boot loop. There is no risk of breaking your device with these. However, it's all up to you if you want to risk doing all this. You can also go here, go there. We'll go Hulu. And there it is. We have Hulu. Not only that, but we could also get Wells Fargo back in here. I know Wells Fargo doesn't work on a rooted device, but now it will work. I'll launch it up and it'll be able to register and it'll sign in. So all of the apps should work. And that's pretty much it. The fact that you just need these little apps and the fact that Google doesn't actually tell you, even if you open it, that device isn't certified and it sends you to the website, you still have to click around to find out where to register it. I'm gonna leave all the links down in the description. 
if this was too complicated, if I ramble too much, just let me know and I'll redo it. But I won't reset my phone this time. I reset my phone to make this video specifically, but I will not reset it again because that will be like the third time this week.